And LI News Radio Time, 7.36 a.m. As promised, we have with us. These are questions that a lot of people are asking as they start to look at the calendar. We are now almost halfway through the month of June. There is a beautiful, wonderful summer ahead of us. And uh, many people are wondering what to do with their kids. And we have with us Lisa Navarra, award-winning educator, uh, founder and CEO of Child Behavior Consulting, has a resume two miles long, just a lot <laughs> a lot of expertise and a lot of information to give out. Lisa Navarra, how are you, my friend? I'm doing great. Good morning, Tom. How are you? All right, doing well. I'm glad. I'm glad you took the time out. I know you. You have a busy day going off to the the classroom, and of course, uh, all the, uh, the the great things that you do. Uh, just recently, obviously, a major contest uh, by the Teachers Federal Credit Union. You were a number one winner. I know many people here on Long Island very proud of you, including us here at LA News Radio. Uh, but here's the big thing. M- many parents actually do say this to me. You know, the kids are home now, and and so on. And, you know, there's a lot of uh, positive things that can be done, of course. We all know this as regular people, but you're not one of the regular people when it comes to this, to, to our children. And uh, there's a lot of negative things that can be done. So for the parents and grandparents, because a lot of grandparents have custodial care uh, during the day while mom and dad go out to work, is uh, what to do with these kids? Uh, let's start with that. Lisa Navarra. Yes. Well, first I would like to say, Tom, um, before the school year ends, there's some things that we should be looking for within our children. You know, especially the younger children or, or children who have struggled with learning or social skills at all, you know, the end of the school year is a very difficult time for them, or at least it could be, because it means big change and some level of uncertainty. Routines, predictability, going to school, um, knowing what they're doing throughout their day is, is very um, securing to them. They know what to expect. So the weather is getting nicer. Kids are typically um, not really wanting to focus or they're having difficulty focusing in school. And now they, they feel like the change is coming. So I would suggest to those parents and caregivers that if you're starting to see any changes in your child, reassure them that they've had a great year or talk about the whole year, what they've learned, and help them transition. Transition from the everyday predictability of school to now what to expect from the summer. You see, keeping routines is really important for a lot of kids. Sometimes not having routines is great for kids. Sometimes kids just need to relax and be able to do and have some more choices of their own. But for a lot of kids, they need to be able to expect or know what to expect from their summer. You know, that, that's interesting. I mean, the, the idea of routines versus no routines, uh, a lot of children, I, I guess, I mean, again, speaking as someone who just is an observer, uh, they know when to walk out of their house in the morning, get on the bus and, and do all of that. And certainly that's a routine. Uh, but what about, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, there's television and there's uh, the iPads or the cell phones. Kids today at a very young age have iPhones and they can do just so much with. At what point have we overdone that? Or is that a good thing? I mean, I know five- and six-year-olds that walk around with their iPhones, and, and they're doing incredible things with them that I couldn't even dream of doing. And uh, sometimes I'll ask a six-year-old uh, how to work a computer. Uh, <laughs> is, is, is that something that uh, should be encouraged, or can we go back to the old ways and, and maybe have some good wholesome activities as opposed to the high-tech uh, third decade of the middle of the third decade of the 21st century? Uh, what, what should we rely ourselves on? When, when do we go back to, to the more human element of communication? This is such an important, valuable topic of conversation, and it's one that we really need to take seriously. There's been new research out suggesting that uh, – iPad use, electronic use in young children is causing depression, anxiety, symptoms of ADHD, which is inability to focus um, or difficulty focusing, difficulty um, being calm within themselves. You see, what the iPad does is it raises the adrenaline levels um, and endorphins because it's so exciting, right? If a kid is playing a game or even if it's Letters, even young children, if it's letters and it's like, okay, find the letter A, and they find the letter A, 
or if you're playing a shooting game and you shoot the target, you know, there's some kind of reward that the game gives them, of course, then to move on to the next level, to the next phase, right? So this is exciting. But now when you put that aside, that kind of excitement doesn't exist every day all the time within our real lives, does it? No, it doesn't. Right. But the whole but the whole idea, though, is uh, how do we... Uh, well, how do they occupy their time? So I've had grandparents say to me, Tom, I just, I can't run around with these kids all day long. And, you know, my son, he, he left them with me for the day. And now we got the summertime coming. Uh, okay. I, yeah. I, you would be the person I would call. I'd say, well, don't yeah. call me, call Lisa Navarro. I mean, you know, yeah. you know, you would be the person I would, I would seek the advice from. What do you do in a yeah. situation like that? So what happens is we as adults have become so dependent on our phones and electronics and whatnot that it's become our norm, right? We sleep with the, you know, some people sleep with their phone next to their bed. It's the first thing that they check. It's like, oh, I reached out to them. Why haven't they gotten back to me, right? So it's become such a norm in our lives that we're instilling that same norm in young children who should be developing their brains and experiencing life on their level through play. So now children, in this case, are not used to playing. They're not used to asking questions. If I push this, what happens? If I build it too high, will it stay? What if I put this block on on top? Is it going to top over or can I go higher? And see, all these are brain-building, problem-solving experiences that develop strategies and learning and coping mechanisms. So what happens is they're not having these coping mechanisms. I first, before I answer your question, if you don't mind, I want to go into a, uh, I want to go into a scenario, into a classroom, and then I'd like to circle back into what do you do with your child or your grandchild when you have them for the day, right? So this is the severity of what's happening with a lot of kids. So when I meet with parents, and they're young parents, and they don't know because they grew up with iPhones and they grew up with technology, so it's their norm too. So they're just doing what they know. Well, there are children as young as four or five years old. They're going into class. They don't have the tolerance to sit um, and to get things done um, or play and share or even when somebody wants something from them and and they they don't ask. They just take or someone Mm -hmm. takes from them. And now all of a sudden you have a physical conflict. I've seen this a lot where children are coming in, either taking what they want, they're pushing other kids, they're crying, hitting, because they didn't get what they wanted. It's not, they're not getting that immediate feedback that they want, as I just had referred to, where the, they do something on the iPad and then the iPad rewards them, right? So now they're trying to bring what they've learned through experience at home uh, into the classroom because it's what they know and it's not working socially. Who wants to be with a friend who's going to get decked because they didn't share their toy or give them the pencil because they needed one and the kids got five others next and who's sitting next to them. So these are a lot of the things that we're seeing in the classroom because parents say, well, quote, unquote, he only spends two hours on an iPad a day. And sincerely, that parent thought it was okay, right? So... This is where we really need to think about what are we doing, what are we not teaching our children, why are we inhibiting their experiences with the world. So to go back now to say the grandparent who has a child for the day, and this child is used to being on the phone or a tablet and not used to playing. I've heard parents say, oh, they have plenty of toys, but he doesn't want to play with any of them. Well, because he's not used to it. He doesn't see the value in it, the benefit in it. It's slow. I have to do something. I've got to build. I, 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 there's more effort in a certain way, right? So I would suggest as the grandparent giving the child a couple of choices. What do you want to do today? We could do this or we can do this, right? And then when we come back, here's your choices. Again, back to routines. But giving the child a choice that will fall within the comfort level of the grandparent. So that's a big suggestion right there, giving choices and routines. And when the child comes to them, whether it be daily, a couple times a week, that they know 
when they go to grandma, grandpa's house, nanny and pop's house, whatever it might be, that this is okay. I get to choose what I want, and this is what's going to happen there. And watch that child grow, become more confident, and communicate more. And mm. that's really a benefit, and that's a gift to a child over the summer. Right. You know, again, uh, I'm, I'm listening to this. I'm taking some notes. I, it's, you know, interesting because I think I think it's very valuable information. And before we let you go to the, uh, this morning, uh, I want you to give out some information where people could uh, contact you or Child Behavior Consulting and, you know, really get some 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 great ideas. Uh, obviously, travel tips. I think that's important. Uh, rather than the daily routine of July and August, uh, you're going to be taking a trip. You're going somewhere. Uh, again, uh, what's is it really just the same thing except you're doing it in a car or, or are you doing it at a, a resort or a hotel or something like that, uh, or even just visiting family in another state? Uh, is, it, is it the same advice or is it the same routines that you should follow? Yes, Tom. You know, it, it, depending on what your child's needs are, to become aware of them and to know them and value them. So if you have a child who has difficulty transitioning, then you want to prepare them. Show them pictures. Show them a map. Show them pictures of who you're visiting, where you're visiting. Create some sort of, and not everybody wants a routine, and I get that, um, but some kind of routine. We're, gonna, we're taking the airplane. This is the time. This is the day you take out the calendar, and this is when we're landing. And, you know, just give a little bit of a, of a background so they know what to look for. And then if you have a child who really has difficulty, um, whether they are, let's say, on the spectrum or they have some kind of difficulty, maybe they're anxious, well, you want to maybe have a bag or something where they can help you or you can help them create uh, a safe space for them. So you might want to have in there things that they like, toys, not electronics, but toys. And listen, we don't have to say no electronics, but you can limit. And again, that's part of your schedule to limit. Here's 20 minutes of putting a timer on. If that doesn't work, then the next time we don't get the, the iPad, right? So you can have things that they are comfortable with, whether it be a stuffed animal, whether it be a book, feelings, having children label their feelings, books with feelings on them, in them, you know? So things that prompt conversation, things that are comfortable for them, that bring a little spice of home with you, will also help with transitioning right. and having fun when you're away. Yeah. Uh, well, we all like to have fun. There's no doubt about that. Now, in the meantime, uh, just, a, just a, a side issue is um, people are still concerned that we're suffering from the COVID years. Uh, kids were not in school. Uh, have we recovered from COVID? Uh, in other words, the time that, that kids um, couldn't go to school, they had to do it virtually. Uh, in my mind, as a former teacher myself, I, I, I can't imagine that have been a valuable experience to try to impart knowledge from a teacher, a teacher with the expertise, and certainly something that you do, and you, you extremely do it so well. Um, have we recovered at this point, uh, now that we're a couple of years after the COVID? Unfortunately, we have not. Mm. We are seeing delays in all ages of all children, and uh, even even preschool kids, right, even four-year-olds. So imagine being a four-year-old now, they were a lot younger during COVID, where now we have children who are in high school, middle school, elementary school, where their education and development was interrupted. So we still are. The number one thing we need to do is provide that structure and also provide communication platforms for them. Please make sure that your children are talking, not just wagging their head up and down, yes and no, because they're having a great difficulty um, communicating. And we need to have kids find their words. We need to model talking for them. Make sure that they're speaking. They're looking at you in your eyes when you're talking. Make sure you're looking at them. These are basic things, but it's not happening. And it's affecting the way that they, they write they read, because when we speak, then it really prepares us for a lot of other academic areas. So that we're seeing delays in all areas. No, we are not done. And, and children are having a lot of difficulty focusing. And that's really where my books come in. And the music, um, they've been a great help. As a matter of fact, I just attended a preschool graduation yesterday. Tom, they used the song, I Believe in Myself. I oh. it, was ab- <laughs> it was it was absolutely heartwarming 
um, and, you know, the words of confidence in there. And um, really, it's a great motto to go by. And then what they did was they introduced the song with um, the breathing ball. And the breathing ball, for all of you who are listening, really helps kids to – now, imagine this, okay? All elementary school, this is great. When you get into your upper grades, they still need to breathe. But you're not going to say calm mind. Um, you're not going to say breathe the flowers and, and candles as much. You could find something else that's more meaningful. But kids are, are we're, t- we're teaching children to smell the flowers, blow out the candle. And what's really great, Tom, you said about the winning the award before. Well, I used some of the grant money to to buy these breathing balls. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just three days ago, I created a parent and child workshop. Breathing is more than taking a breath. And there we had lots of parents and children come, and we talked about what's called self-regulation. And you and I are talking about that right now, really being able to focus and control what you're doing, you know, with intent. Make your actions in- intentional. And uh, it-, it was absolutely fantastic. So make sure that, you know, that I would suggest that your listeners, when speaking and interacting with the children, um, that they're calm. And if they're not and they're starting to get a little anxious, notice that, stop them, look at them, say, you know, do me a favor, let's smell the flowers and blow out the candles. And, uh, you know, my books really and the music, they really support all of that. They're available on Amazon and uh, they're really relative to kids and and their needs. So I I would suggest those as resources as well. But uh, just give your kids a whole lot of love. Yeah. And before I let you go, there was a, a bill passed up in Albany. Now, this is just a, an opinion question. It, it follows the COVID. We were very quick to close down the schools. Uh, let's go to remote learning and so on. And, and these school buildings were closed for a good period of time. The um, Albany had just approved through the state legislature, which ended their session last week, uh, for uh, giving the, the school districts uh, mandatory that they have to cancel school for heat days. And it's kind of interesting that if the temperature in the room reaches 82 degrees, they have to turn on fans, pull down blinds. But if it reaches 88 degrees, by the way, that's really hot. And I, I guess I agree with this, but I wish there was an alternative. I just want to comment on this. But if the, if the uh, classroom, whether it's on the elementary, middle, uh, high school level reaches 88 degrees, then they have to shut school down. You think that uh, isn't there a better way? Uh, it just seems like we're too quick to close school. That's that's my point. You your, your thoughts. You know, I was a little conflicted by that too, actually, and I, uh, I, I, I was, um, I was thinking about that myself. And you know, what's interesting is that children of special education uh, classes they have to have air conditioning in their classrooms, and so um, I guess maybe this was a really a long time coming. But you're mm. right; it shouldn't be. There's got to be an alternative. Let's maybe look at some grants. But again, we're talking about more money, and there yeah. are schools who are not having their um, uh, you know, teachers. You know, they're accessing teachers and stuff. So, yeah. you know, um, yeah. it, it's a problem. I think we need to do more investigating about it. Yeah, but, uh, you know, again, to me, stop closing the schools. And, yes, I don't want to be in a room with 88 degrees. I'm going to tell you that right now. But, uh, you know, m- maybe at some point uh, there's got to be some sort of an alternative to this. And, and you're right, uh, where the monies can be found in order to make them uh, make our, our, our classrooms more palatable to, to learning. And uh, before I let you go, uh, any phone numbers, websites uh, that people can get a hold, hold of you? Yes, absolutely. And thank you for asking. I, I would really suggest... Take a look at those books, Henry Learns to Launch, and, um, and, and that whole series that I have. And that can be found on Amazon, Lisa Navarra. Uh, or you could just go right, go right to my website, childbehaviorconsulting.com. And there you'll see my podcast and all the other resources there. And you just click a link and it'll bring it right to Amazon. And, uh, you know, you'll, you'll have a good platform for your kids. Um, so I would really suggest going to childbehaviorconsulting.com and there's a lot of resources for you. I want everybody to have a really great summer. You've worked really hard to get this beautiful weather, so enjoy it and enjoy each other. Once again, thank you to Lisa Navarro, award-winning educator. Always great to have her on, not only on the morning show, but uh, Lisa's a frequent guest on uh, Your Island with Tom Shalero, our midday program. Lisa, thank you very much. You have a great weekend and we will talk to you soon.